You're supposed to be wearing white underwear, you mm -hmm. little slut. And what do I find you wearing? Red, damp red parrot panties soaked with the scent of your sex. She said, reaching for the cane and letting it gl glide through her fingers. I'm afraid your punishment will have to be most severe, young lady. But first, I'm not really clear on how you are accomplishing this nasty deed of yours. Take off the rest of your clothes and show me. How is this possible? She hadn't so much as touched me, not even guide me, not even to guide me down the hallway with a gentle hand on my back. Nothing, not one touch. And yet I was felt wetness, sticky, beautiful wetness, running down my thighs so freely, I was afraid I'd be leaving a puddle on the floor. With spastic fingers, I unbuttoned my blouse and removed my bra and skirt. I left the ivory thigh-high stay-up stockings I had worn because they seemed somewhat schoolgirl-like on, get the balloon cape, lay down across my desk so I can see everything clearly. I want that slutty little pussy of yours right here. She tapped at the front edge of the desk with her cane and spread wide open, and then you can show me just what you were doing. Yes, ma'am, I whispered, nearly dying with shame as I climbed naked onto the desk, my ch chest as flush as my cheeks, knowing my inner thighs must be gleaming with my juices and my clit swollen and standing at attention. I began to caress the balloon to my cheek, let it guide let it glide down to my hard, dusky nipples and belly the way I had done so many times in my head. It was so close to my sex, to my aching clit and cunt, that I felt the static jump between the thin latex and my few fine blonde pubic hairs. I parted my thighs even further, losing any self-consciousness for one all too quick moment as a balloon touched my sensitized clit and I gasped. The sound of my voice bringing me back to the humiliating reality of where I was naked, splayed, and dripping wet in front of a completely just stranger, a stranger who I just paid for the privilege of being humiliated by. <laughs> I started to close my legs when Madeline's hand lighted on the warm, dewy skin of my thigh. If I had thought that the balloon generated electricity, her gentle touch and the single word she spoke, no, were like a surge in voltage. You are indeed a very nasty girl, Kate, spread out for me like a little tramp, and enjoying it too. I can see how wet you are, <coughs> wet like only a true slut would be. I can see how desperately you need to be punished. She got up from her chair and stood peering down at me for a moment before extending her hand to me and helping me on trembling legs to my feet. She led me around to the back of the desk and bent me over at the very corner so that my groin was pressed right up against the worn old wood edge. I wanted to press myself in, into it. I was so desperate to come, I thought I would die, but I didn't dare. My pulse quickened, knowing I was seconds away from having her spank me, spank me by telling me how bad I was, how I needed a firm hand. I'm going to begin now, she started, with my hand. You'll get 10 strokes. I expect you to stay completely still for those. There will be plenty of time to, for you to writhe about when we advance to the other instruments. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am, I said, having fallen completely into this way of addressing her. The first time her hand made contact with my pert round ass, it was almost gentle. I felt her open palm and splayed fingers distributing the soft impact. I sighed in relief, and I held as still as she, command still as she commanded. The next was in the same spot, again a light touch. It didn't hurt. It smarted. It became more and more difficult to remain still with each progressive stroke, but I did. And it filled me with an odd sense of accomplishment. <laughs> each of those first ten strokes were in exactly the same place. Each successively harder until it did hurt, but the harsher slaps made my cut grind harder into the edge of that desk, filling me with the sensation of pain and pleasure all at once, making me know I would lose my mind if I didn't come. Then she began on the other cheek until it was crimson as, as crimson as the other one and warmed the entire room. For a nasty slut like you, Kate, I think something more severe than my hand is called for, don't you? You choose, Kate. The belt or the paddle? Which is it to be? This was not in the plan. I had to choose. Did I need to be even more complicit in my degradation? As long as I, all I had to say was, yes, ma'am, I was fine. But now she wanted more words, and the horror of it was making me even wetter. The, the belt, ma'am, I said. The more words, the, these even harder to find and vocalize were demanded. Tell me you deserve it, Kate. Tell me how harshly you need it, dirty girl. I need to be punished, ma'am. I deserve it for being so, so slutty and hard, harder than before. 
She wasn't gentle then, like she had been with her hand. Each ensuing stroke made me jump and bite hard into my lip to keep from screaming, until finally I was screaming and begging her to stop. But she didn't stop. Instead, she told me how she was doing it for my own good, how she knew I needed this, how if there was a repeat of this incident, my punishment would be even harder, and perhaps in front of the roommate I'd offended, who, after all, had the right to see me suffer for my sins, mm -hmm. didn't I think? My ass was on fire when she finally let, laid the belt on the table. My face was pressed to the, te to, to the desk and my chest heaved as I tried to compose myself. She again offered me her hand to steady me as I straightened up. I realized my face was soaked with tears and only when she looked into my eyes and slowly snaked an elegant finger down my cheek and passed my, passed my lips into my mouth. Over my knee now, Kate, we're nearly done. She sat in the large plus chair and pulled her skirt up, revealing firm, supple thighs, then motioned for me to lie across her lap. It was so molten, it felt like I flowed, I was so molten, I felt like I flowed over her. Her thighs, cool as alabaster, soothed my overheated legs. She felt soft and hard at the same time. She stroked my hair, which had somehow fallen loose from its former ponytail, and then locked her ankles around mine before scratching her fingernails in cruel patterns on my abused bottom. My cunt pressed into her knee, and I began to grind myself against it, desperate to come, desperate for this final release, desperate for this to end, knowing once it was over, it wouldn't be long before I was equally desperate for it to begin anew. She began spanking me again as I ground myself against her knee. She didn't stop spanking me when I started to come. I lost all sense of who I was, where I was, as I screamed and convulsed in her lap. There were contractions so strong in my cunt, thighs, and belly, I knew not only would my bottom be aching tomorrow, but my entire body would feel the effect for days after. It was easily the strongest orgasm of, of my life. As I lay there across her lap, coming back to earth, to my body, to myself, I wondered, how do I, how do I go back? How do I go back to regular sex? Here was this woman who had not touched me sexually. Her fingers had not plunged into my desk nor fondled my breast. She hadn't kissed me or whispered endearments in my ear. And somehow she had given me the most intense sexual experience of my life. Madeline let her hand fall into my hair again and soothed it absently. When she stopped, I knew it was time to get up, get dressed, and get back to my life. I also knew one more thing when she walked me to the door and leaned in to kiss my cheek as if we were old friends. I knew this wouldn't be my last visit to her. I knew this was a step in another direction, one I'd been pointing towards for nearly my entire life.